Okay, so let us begin now. And uh, so what we did yesterday. So yesterday we talked about a few topics. And uh, so yesterday we talked about, it. in fact, we discussed two different topics yesterday. So one which we discussed and talked about is um, um, handling unit. So what is handling unit? And then we talk about the handling unit uh, during outbound delivery. And then we talk about the handling unit during inbound delivery. We did that exercise. And after that, the next exercise which we did was related to goods issue. And um, good issue exercise and then impact uh, on various functions. We did end-to-end -end, uh, goods issue exercise. And then, uh, you know, we did the whole process. We verify the impact on ATP. We verify and check on uh, stock requirement list. We verify impact on uh, finance. So we did all those different uh, exercises. Okay. So thank you, everyone. And thank you. I really appreciate you joining the session. So now uh, what we're going to discuss today is basically a different topic. So and before I start uh, the new topic, so we're going to discuss about shipment. Okay. So whatever we discuss is inbound delivery, outbound delivery, return delivery. So different type of deliveries we have discussed. So when we talk about outbound delivery, so outbound delivery is basically the basis for Outbound delivery is the basis for shipping process. Now, what we are talking about here is a shipment. Shipment is a different topic. Shipment is a different agenda. Now, what is shipment document? Shipment is a part of transportation. So in this unit, we'll talk about transportation. Transportation, which is there in SAP, ERP. Transportation is basically talking about various type of shipment. Now, the shipment could be outbound shipment or it could be inbound shipment. Outbound shipment, when, for example, when you're sending the material to the customer, so when we are sending the material to the customer, that is an example of a sharp outbound shipment. We have created outbound delivery. We have not created outbound shipment. So today we will discuss and talk about outbound shipment. Then we also have something called inbound shipment. Inbound shipment when product is coming back to us. So we talked about and did the inbound delivery. Inbound delivery happens when the material is coming back to us, for example, from a supplier. So when the material is coming back to us, for example, from a supplier, that is an example of inbound shipment. So we'll talk about outbound shipment and we'll talk about inbound shipment. Outbound shipment is in case of sales in case of SD, inbound shipment, in case of purchasing, and we're going to do both scenario. Now, what is the purpose of transportation planning component? So let me, so when we talk about transportation planning component, so transportation planning is basically the basis for performing different transportation functions. So that is called transportation planning. Transportation means related to transportation. So shipment document is the basis for planning the various shipping processes. So 
So here we have a, what is the purpose of transportation? So shipment document is the basis for transportation. And what does the transportation do? Various things. For example, calculating the freight. So if I'm sending this material to the customer, how much is going to the freight? How do we get settlement? Settlement basically means ultimately we need to pay the freight to the trucking company. Who is the service provider? Service provider basically means when you're sending the material to the customer, which is the trucking company or service provider. It could be trucking, it could be any mode of transport. So there are different means of transport and transport aids. Means of transport basically means you may be sending the material by truck, by a UPS, by a FedEx, by a rail, by a air. So there could be different means of transport. And then we can do the traceability and monitoring of shipment documents. So that basically is the purpose of doing shipment planning. And then the last but the not least is the shipment cost. So if I'm sending the material from my location to the customer place, then how much the total cost of shipment going to be? So that is the shipment cost. So here we have a something called create shipment. This is a different document. So if you go come back here and if you see in that uh, we can have a shipment document. Shipment document is different. We have not created shipment document. Shipment document is the basis for transportation function. Now where it is? We go to SAP. When you go to logistic execution, so we have we have seen inbound process, outbound process, you have seen inbound internal warehouse process, and then there is a transportation. In the transportation, here we have a transaction code called VT01N. We have not used this transaction code yet, and they are VT01N for single processing, VT04 for collective processing, and VT07 if you want to do collective processing in background. And if you do uh, and we're going to come here, we're going to do this exercise, we're going to do this whole end-to-end -end exercise, and then we can create a shipment document. Okay. So that is what we have, shipment document. Shipment document is the central document which is used to model shipment in SAP. So when I'm sending the material to the customer, it has a various information. It contains information necessary for organizing and carrying out and means of transport, shipment, transportation, etc, etc, etc. So now let us do an exercise. So what I'm going to do, so I want to do an exercise for outbound shipment document. We're going to do inbound also, outbound shipment document. For outbound shipment document I want to create a sales order, like we have created many before, this transaction code VA01. And I want to create urban delivery, like any urban delivery which you've done before, VA01N or collective processing or single processing, whatever. So we can have a different uh, documents which you can have in the system and that is the basis for creating various shipment documents. So we create outbound delivery for example and then after that we want to do the picking and then we want to create shipment Transaction code for that is VT01N. So this is the exercise for us. Okay. Now let's create a sales order. 
Please go to sales sort of VA01. I hope uh, all of you can hear my voice coming to you. Okay, great. So now we create a sales order. Hit enter. Enter the sold to party. We enter the material. We enter the quantity. We enter the PO number. And we enter the date. So this is a regular sales order which we have created many, many times. So as far as this sales order is concerned, there is nothing different, nothing unique. And then we set it. So sales order got created. Now after creating a sales order, the next thing which you want to do, you want to create an outbound delivery. So which is the transaction code VL01N. is the same outbound delivery, nothing different in this. This is our sales order. And we make a note of the sales order. After creating sales order, we create urban delivery. And this urban delivery is also done in the same way, like we have created many times. So this is urban delivery here. And then we go to picking tab, and then we enter the location, and then we enter the pick quantity. Whatever. It is fully picked. Now, here we have a transportation tab. Okay. Now in the transportation tab, now here we have a route. This is the route which we have configured. So same route which we have configured in our previous exercises. So same route appears and comes here as well. And then we click change it here. And then we hit enter. Now, if I remove the route, see the what happens. Then when I remove the route, then you look at here, transportation planning status not relevant for transportation planning. So that basically means if route field is blank, then transportation planning cannot be done. So we need to have a route. The moment I enter the route and transportation planning is status become A. So this is a prerequisite that it should have a route and route should also be configured applicable for transportation function. Okay. And then we set it. So here we have something called we created our one delivery. And then we save our one delivery. This is like a using creating any outbound delivery. But one thing which we have saw in the transportation tab, in the transportation tab, we saw relevant for transportation planning. And then we saw route. And then we saw in the route, we can enter the route. Then system is applicable for transportation. If there is no route, then transportation planning relevance is not there. So urban delivery got set. Okay. So we make a note of the delivery. So, so far, all the step which we have done is exactly same as we have done many, many times. Now we want to go to shipment document. So now we want to go to shipment document. So how do we create a shipment document? Now for the shipment document, we have to go to transportation. So shipment is part of transportation. So we go to um, logistic, logistic execution, transportation, transportation planning, create transaction code VT01N. VT01N, if you want to create a single document, VT04, if I want to collect a processing, and VT07, if you do in a backup. This is similar to we talked about creation of you know, outbound delivery and, uh, uh, you know, various other transactions as well, single processing, collective processing. So we go to VT01N. 
So this is the transaction code VT01. Now here, the first thing which you have a transportation planning point. Okay, transportation planning point. So transportation planning point is organization unit. So we need to make a note here. We have a transportation planning point. So transportation planning point. Transportation planning point is basically org unit which is responsible responsible for transportation functions. See, ultimately, and I'll see that here. So outbound delivery is created by shipping point. Shipment document or transportation function is done by transportation planning point. So these are the two separate units. Okay. So we are talking about the transportation planning point. The second thing here is shipment type. And if you go in the drop down, there's different shipment type. You see that in uh, inbound shipment, there is a individual shipment, collective shipment, and there are different document type, and there are some uh, in Z's also. So you can configure as well. So this is the document type. So 001. So we talk of sales document type, delivery document type, quotation document type, inquiry document type, and this is a shipment document type. 0001 is a shipment document type. For different scenario, you can have a different document type. 001 is a sh in individual shipment road. If I want to do an inbound shipment, for example, then you can have a inbound shipment also. Okay. So this is inbound shipment. So when the material is coming from supplier inbound, then you can use inbound shipment. We're going to do that exercise also. So this is, so these are the different document type and there are different document type for different situations and scenarios, which we can use in a standard ICP system. So this is the document. Now here you have a different uh, functions and one of them here is select deliveries. Select deliveries basically means that when we are creating a shipment document then in one shipment document you can have a one delivery or you can have a multiple deliveries so let's say you are sending one shipment to chicago if i'm sending a shipment to chicago then i might have a different documents which might be going to chicago so i can put basically multiple documents which is going to chicago right so in one document, one shipment, you can have a one or multiple outbound deliveries as required. So many, many documents you can have as a part of. So we can say individual shipment and we say inbound delivery. Now select outbound delivery. That basically means here you can select what deliveries you want to put into one shipment. And these are the different uh, criteria, shipping point, loading point. Now, destination, you know, these are the criteria for point of departure. And these are the criteria for destination. So delivery is going to one customer. So let's say for one customer, if you have a multiple deliveries going, we can combine. If you're going to one country, if you're going to one postal code, if you're going to one city, if you're going to one district. So these are different criteria for the destination. So if I have a multiple deliveries going to one zip code or one country or one city or one uh, ship to party, we can possibly combine them together. And these are the different parameters. And then there are different other parameters also like by shipping condition and transportation group route, you can select by the route. So if you have a multiple deliveries going by the route, you can also select by a delivery. So we can select multiple delivery or 
one delivery or multiple deliveries. Now, just to make it uh, more cleaner, I put my delivery number. So I don't want multiple deliveries to be selected. I just want one just to be easy and we hit enter. Then we hit enter, then what happens? In this shipment, this delivery get assigned. You can assign multiple deliveries. See, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There could be many, many deliveries possible here. And after that, I save it. So after that, I save my shipment document. In this shipment document, I have only one delivery document assigned to it. You can have a one or you can have multiple deliveries. Now see the message in the bottom. So message in the bottom, shipment 1482 has been saved. So what is it? What it says basically? So we have a shipment document 1482, which has been saved. Okay. So we go to VT02, we make a note of it. We create a shipment document and then we want to update shipment document. And for update, we can go to VT02. So once after we create a shipment document, then we can also update shipment document as well. Okay. So we go back here and this is shipment document. Now this is various information which we have in the shipment document. Here we can select forwarding agent, yeah? forwarding agent. Forwarding agent basically means which trucking company we are choosing. Account group 005, select and I'm sending, you know, these are nothing but the service providers. These are the trucking companies. Or it could be trucking, it could be something else also. You see the parcel service and MG trucking and ship carrier and you know, they're different carrier. You can create as many as you want, airport, London, carrier, whatever. So we select MG trucking. So we hit enter. So we enter MG trucking. You can enter route also, which route it will go. And after that, we can hit enter. And you, you see the driver one, driver two, which vehicle, which trailer. Okay. So all that information we can send. So that is what you can enter all that information. So which driver it is and uh, which vehicle it is. And then here you have a different deadline. What time is planning? What time is checking? Checking of the vehicle? What time loading is start? What type um, uh, basically we have a loading and shipment completion, shipment is start, shipment end, right? So we can have all those different documents which we can define here okay so we can put that here then we can go to further dates if there is any date here we can define the stages partner the similar partner function if uh, applicable partner maintenance is not possible any kind of text and comment field. So if you want to put any text comment field, we can put it any text comment field. If you want to define any distance and duration, we can define any distance and duration. Now this dis di uh, total duration, one hour, that is coming from route. What is the actual duration? What is the queue time? What is the distance? So this allow you to enter all that information, status, a status basically means 
that these are the different stages when you do the transportation planning planning not completed checking not completed loading had not started loading has not ended shipment completion shipment start and shipment end tender tender basically means before you do you can send it to a service providing company that is called tender tender basically means sending information to a service providing company and that service providing company will basically submit us the cost okay then we enter the additional data we can enter supplement if is a dangerous you see the dangerous good so we can define dangerous good any other information dangerous good basically means uh, if the product is classified as a dangerous and why we care about dangerous because many time um, we can have uh, you know different other applications which is related to dangerous good so for example let's say if you are sending uh, you know inflammable item like uh, your oil and gas product now oil and gas products because they are inflammable therefore there could be um, very very important in that regards like how do you pack it so there is a different uh, shipping uh, obligations for different type of item if let us say you are sending vegetables now vegetable if you are sending it should be refrigerated truck and all that so depending upon what type of item it is you might have a different uh, transportation functions this is the shipment documentation you can see shipment number container id description any external id any other tracking id shipment cost calculation you can calculate cost also route determination any administration credit by delivery and all that so all that information is there in the shipment document okay so that is all information so shipment document is a document which is used for the purpose of shipment and transportation planning that is what this basically means and then you have all this information in this document shipment document provide following function combining outbound delivery to form a ship you can have a multiple outbound deliveries into one shipment okay. that is possible so here so combining outbound deliveries to form outbound shipments you can have one or multiple deliveries going into one shipment document we saw that we can assign service agent service agent means which trucking company mode of transport means that uh, route is that route is for ro for road or for air for what we can define different planning and monitoring deadlines so here we have different dates planning execution so when checking start loading start loading end we can do that also the structure of the shipment document the shipment document like any document there is a header and there is a line item so here this is the header information and this is the line item information and here you can have different documents you can add into it so this is header on the top this is line item if you want to add further deliveries it will open and you can add further deliveries we have a one delivery here but if you want to add more we can add more this is add deliveries you can see overview of the current shipment documents so this is overview if you want to see 
message for anything. You can see message means output. Now here, we talked about yesterday handling unit. Similarly, here also there is a handling unit, which basically means that we talked about yesterday, we create a handling unit yesterday, we take the outbound delivery when we pack it. But when we put the material in the truck, the truck can also be handling unit as well. So the system allows us to do the packing and creating a new handling unit at the time of transportation as well. That is why the screen appears. This is the structure of the document. Then we talked about transportation planning point. Now transportation planning point is organization unit. It is a organization unit. So shipping point is the organization unit for delivery process, outbound delivery. So when we create an outbound delivery, that is done for shipping point. We also configure shipping point. Transportation planning point is used for the purpose of transportation. That is why when we went to the VT01 and then we have a transportation planning point 1000 or whatever and you can configure also. And it's defined in the configuration. So if you go to configuration, SPRO. So first we look at the shipping point. So we went to the enterprise structure and the enterprise structure we defined, we configured our shipping point. That is what we did. We configure our shipping point also. And we also did a configuration related to shipping point determination also. For the automatic shipping point determination also, how does the system do that also we did. And then below that we have a maintain transportation planning point we click on it so we have maintained transportation planning point we click on it and here we can see different transportation planning point so this is the transportation planning point and then this is what we are using now what we say here is Transportation planning point is defined at a company code level. They are defined at the company code level. See that bullet point number four is specified for a company code. So if you see here in the transportation planning point 1000, it is assigned to company code. It is not assigned to plant. Shipping point is assigned to plant. Transportation planning point is assigned at the company code level. So that basically means in a company code, what is the plant? It gets assigned to all of them. So assignment of the shipping point is at the is a plant level, which we did before. And transportation planning point assignment is at the company code level. That is what we see here. Transportation planning point. Transportation planning point is organization unit which is relevant for, which is needed for the purpose of transportation. So transportation function, transportation planning, transportation coordination, all transportation function and shipment document creation is done at the transportation planning point. It's an organization unit which is responsible for doing various shipment and planning activities. Transportation relevant item. In the sales order line item, there are several information related to transportation relevance. Okay, let's understand that. So we created sales order. So we save it. And after saving this document, we, this document we have created, if I go to sales order, in the sales order at the line item and also actually header both, there is a shipping tab. And then we saw that in the sales order line item also, there is a information related to shipping. So shipment document 1482 has been saved. And uh, if I go back to the document flow, so here we have a 
order created on this date. We get a delivery created on this date. This is the order number. If you go to order and we go to line item and here we have a shipping tab. In the shipping tab, we have a lot of information related shipping. So we have a plant. Plant is a delivering plant. Plant get determined automatically based upon customer material or customer material info record. Then we have a shipping point which get determined automatically. We did talk about that. We did configuration also. You can manually override if your manual multiple transport uh, shipment point is defined in the configuration, the system will do that. And then there is a route. And the route determination also we discussed and talked about. Then apart from that, we have other fun other uh, functions here as well. So here we have, let's say, means of transport type. So that basically means, are you sending this material in the pallet and this trailer, how you're sending? You have a shipping type. You're sending that material by the truck and train and chip and so this is coming in the sales order line item. That is what we see here. In the sales order line item on the shipping tab, we have all these different information. <laughs> and then um, apart from the line item, if you go to a header as well, if you go to header, there is a shipping tab as well. So there's a line, shipping tab with the line item and shipping tab with the header, both. So you have a information in both. You have a special processing ID. A special processing means if you have to create some kind of a special treatment, a special function for that particular shipment. Transportation relevant information. This is the flow. <clears throat> So we can create a sales order. We did it today also and before also. We created delivery, which we create today also, many times before as well. Picking and packing, we did today as well. We had done before as well. After that, the next step is the shipment document creation, which is what we did today. Shipment document creation. Shipment document creation is a transaction code BT01N for single processing. Now, apart from this document, there are many other documents as well, which we can do in the standard SAP. Okay. So those documents, those functions can be created in the SAP based upon the our concepts. Okay. So here, then after the shipment, there is a goods issue. Now this goods issue also we discuss so this is the same good issue we discussed yesterday. And then there is a billing. Okay. So this is the end-to-end -end flow, including shipment document. Now, whether we have to use shipment or not, that is a choice. If you have a route, then there are a few other parameters as well. So here we have a shipment type. Shipment type is a document type. So now let's go back to the shipment. Go back, shipment document. We go to display. Now here, this is our shipment type. And this is the document type. And you can configure different document type. And you can verify the configuration of shipment type also. So if you go to configuration, and if you go back out of this from enterprise structure, if you go to logistic execution, <clears throat> and then in the logistic execution, we have here transportation. And then in the transportation, you have a shipment. And here you have a defined shipment document type. This is the definition of the shipment document type. We click on it. 
All these different shipment document type are defined. 71 of them. <clears throat> you can create new. This is individual shipment. This is for uh, inbound delivery. If we select that, and if you go to the detail, then there are different document types. This shipment document type 001, assigned to the internal number range, external number range. <clears throat> it is default to that this is used in case of shipping documents. And then here we have a output determination procedure, text determination procedure, partner determination procedure. You are doing in kilograms and cubic meters and different other parameters you can assign to it. So that is what we see here, shipment type. So shipment is a document type, different parameters are associated to it. What are those parameters? Number range, internal number range, external number range, partner procedure, text procedure, etc. Output procedure. All that is defined with a shipment document. There can be different scenarios of the shipment. So we saw that in the shipment, we saw different scenarios. You can have a shipment by a truck from a plant to a customer. So this is my plant and from plant I'm sending to customer. This is one scenario, which is what we're doing today. Then we can have a shipment from a plant to several customers by several trucks. You can do that also. I'm sending the material to the customer A, customer B, customer C, and for every customer, I might have a different mode of transport as well. Then we have another scenario that is a vendor to the plant, inbound. So these are outbound, this is outbound, this is inbound. So this is my vendor, and from the vendor material coming in is inbound. So that is the inbound scenario. So you can do that as well. You can have empty return shipment from customer to vendor. So yesterday we talked about handling unit. We talked about some of the handling unit um, is like a returnable transport packaging. Like um, we have a container, we have a drum, we have a pallet, and that is coming back to us. And if those material which is coming back to us in such cases also, we can use scenario in which we can take material back from customer coming to our plant. Then you can have a shipment from several plant to several customer with several mode of transport. Plant A, plant B, going here, connecting into um, Chicago, from Chicago it is going to New York, from New York it is going to, you know, New Jersey, New York, Boston, different places. So shipment can have different scenarios. Then in the shipment type, you can have a different uh, examples individual shipment. So when we saw here, this is document type, individual shipment, there's a collective shipment. So if we go back here, individual shipment, what is individual shipment? One single point of a departure and one single point of a destination, one to one. Make a note of it. That is called individual shipment. In case of individual shipment, we have one single point of a departure going to one single point of destination. That's a one scenario. You can have a collective shipment also, which is another document type. So if we go back here, there's a collective shipment. What is collective shipment? one or more point of departure and one or more destination. So material going from one or more departure zone to one or more destination. We're sending to multiple customers. If you are using angel segment, we use document type 001. If you want to use collective, we have a shipment document type. 002. So depending upon the scenario and situation, we have a different document type, which we need to use. That is what we have. Individual shipment, collective shipment. 
Now, there is something called transportation relevance. We have created many, many deliveries, but we have not created transportation. Transportation will only be created by three parameters. In order for outbound delivery to be relevant for transportation, there are three prerequisites. Point number one, transportation relevance of the doc delivery document type. So delivery document type should be delivery document type should be made relevant for transportation. Delivery item category should be made relevant for transportation. Route should be made relevant for there are three parameters. Check them in the configuration. So if you go back, go back. So here we have a maintain transportation relevance means a item a outbound delivery will only be relevant for transportation if these three things are under control are made relevant let's understand them so we go to maintain transport relevance we make it we check it here and here we have a make relevant for delivery document type item category and the route that is what we have doc type item category and route these three should be marked for transportation. We click on it. Now, if you click on it, and then here, if I go to delivery LF, and that delivery LF has been marked relevant for transportation. Has been made relevant for transportation. This checkbox. Jai, because of this checkbox, delivery document type is relevant for transportation function. If this checkbox is not on, you cannot use this delivery in transportation. That is the first prerequisite. Now, what is the second prerequisite? Item category. Item category of delivery document. We click on it. Now here, our standard item category is TAN. So we look at this item category TAN. And when you look at it here, then this checkbox is not on. Okay. So a lot of these item, all these item categories are made relevant for item uh, for our transportation. and lot of them. Now the third and final is route. So any delivery has to be set up if is if you want to do transportation, then we have to this checkbox on delivery label. If we want that item to be relevant for transportation, then we have to this checkbox. And if we want route, remember we saw in delivery. So there is a checkbox here. So that checkbox makes this route relevant for transportation functions. That is what this basically means. That is what we see here. That is what we have three things. How do we create a shipment document? There are multiple options. We can do single document collectively and we can do using the, you know, some external transportation management system. So we go back here and uh, if you go to transportation, so there's a single processing, it's a single processing, collective processing and there's collective processing in the background. 
So that is what we have seen, three options. So transaction code for single processing at VT01N, collective processing at VT04, and for background processing at VT07. The three transactions which SAP provides for creating shipment document. We have used individual delivery. So this is VT01 and VT04, VT07. Right? So we have used and we have created a shipment document. We have created a shipment document. We have seen this selection parameter. Selection parameter basically allows us to convert and group multiple deliveries by different parameters. So for example, all the deliveries going to a country or to a city, to a zip code or to a customer. So we can choose them and we can group them. So we have a one truck going to one city, we can put uh, you know five other deliveries also into it. Okay. So that is what it, the shipment creation come into the picture. And then here in the shipment creation, you have a different dates here. Now we, if you go back here to the shipment document, if you go to VT01N, so this was the document we have created. Now in this document, you have all these different uh, stages, planning starts. So when the planning gonna start, when the checking gonna start, when the truck had checked in, when the loading gonna start, when loading gonna end, shipment completion. Now here we can put a, so here we are giving this shipment from this transportation planning on this date, on this time, and it is going by uh, this trucking company, MG Trucking. And then we can put uh, some ID here also, you know, Truck number one, two, three. I can put some other um, additional criteria. Truck is thirty two feet tall. You can enter all that data. That is what we see at shipment creation, all these parameters. And then if you go back, we say shipment is started and then shipment end and then we say it. These are the different deadlines for the shipment. See the message, shipment 1482 has been saved. Okay. After that, we go to shipment. And uh, here we have a display doc flow. Or we can go to, for example, delivery document. Can check it from here as well so here we can get a better view so we have created sales order we created delivery we created picking we created shipment and then we create goods issue
And if you want to go back and check this delivery document, we can see this delivery document. Transportation completed. This route, we're done. So this is how we do outbound shipment. Now I want to do one more exercise and which is related to how do we do the inbound shipment. In outbound shipment, we start with the sales order and this inbound shipment is start with the purchase order. M21N purchase order. We have created purchase order before also. We have created inbound delivery before also. So we have done that before multiple times. Then we want to create inbound delivery talk transaction code VL31N. And then we want to create inbound shipment. Let us do that. We create a purchase order. And the transaction code for purchase order is ME21N. We have done this a few times before. We select any of vendor. We create in the past. Purchasing group. We enter the material. Now this material should have a purchasing view. Remember this. So this material should have a purchasing view. That is mandatory. Secondly, here in the confirmation control key, so there is a confirmation control key and confirmation control key, we should have inbound delivery. That also we have discussed before because this is required. Without this, inbound delivery cannot be created. So confirmation control key should be there. So here in the purchase order, we should have a confirmation Control key. Confirmation control key allows us to create and uh, inbound delivery. Okay. And then we set it. So we create a PO. And after creating a PO, we want to go and create an inbound delivery. So we go to inbound process. We could have, we do a good receipt for inbound delivery. We create inbound delivery, create and transaction code VL0, VL31N. This inbound delivery transaction is exactly the same as we have done before. So nothing different. So we have a VL31N. We enter the mender. We enter our purchase order. This is the same inbound delivery, which we have done many, many times. Then we hit enter. So this is uh, inbound delivery. We go to stock placement. We enter. Uh, and number, put away quantity, 100 pieces, which you have. Then we go to shipment. So here we have a transportation planning, open shipment. We enter the route number here. Enter. 
the route. This is so far the same transaction and then we save it. So we create inbound delivery. See the message in the bottom. Inbound delivery is also called advanced shipping notification. We make a note of this inbound delivery. We created that. Now after that, we want to create an inbound shipment document, VT01N. So we go back. And then uh, after this, we want to go to our transportation. We want to go to VT01N. VT01 is the same transaction code which allows us to create a shipment document. We click on the VT01N. Same steps, we have a transportation planning point 1000. Shipment type, this time I want to use inbound shipment because this is the material which is coming in from the vendor to our plant. So we use shipment document type 0010. So here we use shipment type Zero zero one zero. Zero zero one zero. And then we add deliveries here. Again, there are so many parameters. By point of departure, you can have the various parameter coming for, because this is inbound, so there is a vendor. In case of outbound, there was a ship to party or customer. Postal code, city, district all these different parameters by which you can select an inbound delivery. I select, I enter the inbound delivery, the one, and then we hit enter. So now this inbound delivery has been assigned here. And then we save it. Now see the message in the bottom, shipment 1483 has been set. So we are able to save the inbound shipment document. Now, after that, we want to go back and check this document. So same thing is coming, coming from which trucking company. What kind of route we're going to use. And then we can put a different document. Planning starts. Checking is start. Loading is start. Same steps. Loading ends. Shipment end. And then we have a shipment start and shipment end. Okay. And we save it. So we are able to create a shipment document, inbound shipment document. 1483. Now we can do Grisit. Go back. We go to VT. We go back to the inbound delivery now, inbound process, inbound delivery, and then we do a process it, the last system. Shipping notification set. Now, if I see the doc flow, 
we created inbound delivery, we created picking, we created shipment, we created go receipt. We did a outbound process and uh, we did inbound process. Okay, so I want to do this today. So I will end here and uh, thank you very much and we'll continue next week. Thank you.